Hello guys, I'm Kiri. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna talk about a very special and very rare British car, but with Italian accent. A 1959 Triumph Italia 2000 Coupe. There were years when Triumph really was a proper British, very cool car and was well known all around the world. Famous models like Triumph TR3, TR4, TR6 were leading the world motor industry. The brand was well accepted not only in UK, but in America, in Australia, even in Europe, Germany and Italy. Deliberately I said these two countries in Europe because it was very hard even today for some small sports car to have big place in the market in Germany or Italy. Italy is very well known with sports cars, convertibles, innovative car technologies, so the British sports car Triumph to have their place was great. But this didn't come just like that. Triumph was a well designed car, very proportional, with strong chassis, powerful engine and gearbox, very cool design and of course fantastic leather interior and instruments. But we didn't say something very important. It was a racer. Different kind of races from Rally to Le Mans, they were winning. Because the brand Triumph was uh, very successful, they had the opportunities sometimes to make something different. In this video, we're gonna see exactly this. In 1950s, the official distributor for Triumph in Italy, Salvatore Ruffino, decided to build 1000 cars based on Triumph TR3, but in Italy. He approached the very well-known designer Giovanni Michelotti or Michelotti to design the car and he did a really amazing job. The design was very close to one of the top cars on that time, Maserati 3500 GT, but in small size. Then the Crosseria was built in Italy by Vignau and actually all the car was assembled in Italy. It was very very special little sports coupe presented for the first time in the Turin Motor Show in 1958 and then the production starts in 1959. But because the car was expensive between 4000 and 5000 US dollars, they didn't reach the number 1000, so it was two times more expensive than Jaguar E-Type. In total, they built 329 cars and the production stopped in 1962 and this was probably the Triumph was taken over by Leyland Motors in 1961. Most of the Italia 2000 were sold in America, but as well in many different countries. Just six cars were produced in right-hand drive configuration, but very, very cool options like overdrive, Borani wire wheels, Nardi wood steering wheel, make the car really very, very sweet. The engine is the same as in the Triumph TR3, 4 cylinder in line, 2 litre, 1991 cc and producing approximately 120 horsepower. For 1959 this was fantastic power. This particular car probably was uh, first delivered in France because of the yellow fog lights on the grille and how you can see the V and the Italia 2000 on the front side of the car and the V is coming from Vignau, the company who built the car. Garello, lights as well, Italian of course, so many parts, they, they are made in Italy. So the car was very, very cool and how we said, very powerful, producing approximately 120 horsepower. The only thing probably someone uh, doesn't like is the weight was a little bit heavy, but this was because of the heavy chassis. But this chassis is bulletproof and very, very reliable. And how we said before, is from the great model Triumph TR3. So this chassis, suspension, engine and gearbox, bulletproof reputation, in combination with the Italian Carrozzeria, make this car absolutely great. And for sure, this is one of the most interesting car in the world. Just have a look at the small touches, like the mirrors. They are very, very absolutely beautiful. The handles, door handles as well. The design on the back side of the door, you can see this shape. And the touches, small touches on the, on the back wings. 
the model of course Italia the the Burani shiny wire wheels very very beautiful car from any any angle the bumper as well is chrome and it's massive bumper looks very very nice on this car the backside of course is absolutely fantastic Italian design of course always from 1950s and 60s just great and I'm gonna say again in combination with this the Triumph TR3 chassis and the powertrain as well is just just amazing the wooden steering wheel nerdy was top back on the day and just very very expensive cars were with this kind of steering wheel but just fantastic the front side as well amazing so from any angle the car looks just very very beautiful absolutely fantastic with these round lights with the indicators under the lights the bumper from side to side again the chrome wire wheels Borani of course the car is absolutely absolutely beautiful but maybe it's better to hear some information from the guy uh, from the TR registry so from the Triumph TR registry and of course they know much more and better about about these cars then you had to say how did this okay. because that that takes over from this so how did it get there and the way it got there because Triumph said to Marcelotti we want a car to replace this right so he designed this okay and he came up with it and as you can see 239 uh, 300 329 um, and they were sent all around the world. They're okay. all left-hand drive. There are no right-hand okay. drive. And I think only six came to the UK. But a lot went to America and a lot went to the rest of Europe. Okay. And they were given to the dealers and uh, they were looking for the reaction no. to it. Oh, right. And all the dealers said exactly the same thing, which is this is one of the most beautiful exactly. cars exactly. ever made. Exactly. And I think probably he might have even thought that as well. But the interesting thing is that it is the same car as that. Oh, okay. Because so everything is the same, like this, the chassis is the same. The chassis is the, the engine, same, the engine is the same. same, all the bits are the same. Okay. Um, because this is a bolt on. The wheelbase maybe is the same? Wheelbase is the same, yep, okay. exactly, exactly the same. Um, on, only only, only the body? Hmm? The, yeah, Except on, on the body. for the body. Okay. And the body is the most amazing um, example of coach building I you agree could with have that. found. I agree with that. And of course this, this line here... It's a typical Italian. The there, it, it goes on throughout the design. So unless you had this you would never have had this okay. and this was a racing car it was yeah. built for one purpose only and that was to win the Le Mans, Le Mans 24 hour race in its class no overall manufacturers manufacturers no way. prize no so, way yes so what's, what's the engine hmm? in that case so what was the engine the same? Uh, no, it doesn't actually. It's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a special TR produced engine. It is the only working one in the world. Um, do you like to look at it? Yes. Now, <laughs> if, you, if you want to see an engine, and it's a, still a small engine, if you can help me with this, because we've got to be very careful not to, um, to scratch the car. And twist that, and it comes up nicely. Whoa. So this engine specific, specifically was built to win the man. All the whole aim of this exercise, and Mercholotti produced this design. The design. It's fiberglass. Yeah. This engine was produced by Triumph with one intention in mind only and that was to win the Le Mans at yeah. uh, the manufacturer's prize, overall prize. Um, 
because in those days, in the early 60s, it was an achievement to actually finish. And you needed three cars in, oh, and all three cars had to finish. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they won the manufacturer's trophy with this, and this was one of them. They had four cars, they had a reserve car. Um, so did, they this is, did they all finish? The three finished. The three, finished. Were, three were ended, three finished. Um, that is the original steering wheel. Um, so they won the manufacturer's trophy. And so four cylinder twin cam. Yes, it's four. Uh, yes, absolutely right. It's four only four cylinder. cylinder. Twin cam, twin cam. See, it only produced 150 brake horsepower. Okay. <laughs> Which back in the day. It was a lot of was car. A lot for a but when you consider what it was competing with, yeah. BMWs, Ferraris, yeah. you name it. Right. Um, so they won it. And what's uh, the weight of the car? I don't know. And, and I don't think it says it there. Um, yeah, we had a magazine at okay. the time. Um, so anyway, it won it. So having won it, they then said, we're not going to open her again mm. because you can't better that. So they then went into rallying, and Ancelotti designed that. Okay. Um, now that one is aluminium. That one. It's sometimes off-road racing. Okay. It's sometimes on-road racing. Okay. Sometimes the roads are closed. Sometimes it's over mountainous. Oh. Okay. So the, the cars have to be very versatile. Okay. Um, because. They, they corner ridiculously. It's a special, special technique. Quite often they're on mountain roads. All oh, right. <laughs> special and suspension, you, you have, maybe. I'll show you something about it. Put this up, you show <laughs> See, the driver has no speedometer. All right. So the reason this the is a racing driver car. doesn't have a speedometer is? is because the navigator's got it because oh, they have a navigator, okay. so they have to navigate <laughs> okay. around a course. Okay, okay. And the navigator has a map, okay. and he knows that they're going to come to a difficult corner, so he says, slow down. right, corner, 90 degrees, um, slow down. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and then, having gone around the corner, he says, you've got straight for five miles, put your foot down. Max, so, okay, yeah. So, so rallying is a very special thing. So it went, and there's a lot of people who get involved in this. Okay. So these are all races that um, they won. So guys, I think these cars from that era, from 1950s, from 1960s, uh, Triumph TR2, TR3, TR4 even, uh, TR6 and even Triumph Stack, they were absolutely amazing cars, very beautifully made, absolutely fantastic, and they were completely different, but everything has changed after 1961 when British Leyland took over uh, Triumph, so everything has changed on that time, and now it's a completely different story. So guys, I hope you liked the video about these fantastic cars at Triumph, especially this nice model. If you like, please subscribe, and see you next time. Bye!